In previous episodes, we've talked about loneliness on the road. We've talked about feeling isolated. Uh, on this episode, we talk about how you find your people when you're out on a contract. This is Atlas All Access. Recruiter Brad McDonald, former traveler, Correct. back with us again. Thanks for having me again, Rich. All right. So this is a fun one because you and I have talked about this before. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about, and we've talked about it a little bit here when, you, when you've sat across from me. Loneliness and isolation are, are, are feeling isolated, are two real things when you're on a contract. 100%. Yeah. Let's talk through maybe how you find your people, and then we'll get into kind of how you found your people too as, sure. as you know when you were out on the road but let, let's talk about this first like what if you're a person that doesn't like to try new things and you're out on a contract how how do you necessarily not break out of that but how do you how do you kind of work into something like that it's uh, talking to your coworkers because there's within nursing and in the hospital there is a varied personalities throughout there that you're going to find someone that you click with you mesh with and maybe you need to find that person. Usually the ones that will reach out to us travelers, they tend to be the more outgoing type of people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, in my experience anyway, they'd invite you to do stuff if you showed any interest in it whatsoever. Is there maybe an assumption on their end, since you are a traveler, you have that outgoing personality? I think probably, okay. more than likely, with their experience and the people they've worked with, if they've worked with other travelers mm -hmm. before. But the big thing is, yeah, get to know your coworkers. Don't isolate yourself. Mm -hmm. even it, you got to find that person. If you're not the one that always jumps out and do something, you know there's someone in your department or somewhere you, you can get to know that are that type of person. Did you ever find when you were out on a contract that maybe that person wasn't on your unit, but it was maybe one of the techs you worked with or, you know, uh, you, you know some, somebody in a different part of the facility? Sometimes, uh, you know, hospitals a lot of times are like family. And so you mm -hmm. really do get to know people from other departments. And techs, when you say techs, actually a lot of times, you know, I'm old ER nurse. Mm -hmm. So you get pretty close with your techs because you both need each other quite <laughs> That's a why bit. I said it, yeah. So I would go out with my techs just about as much as I would with other nurses. With your you fellow know, nurses there. Because roughly yeah. you're going to have the same age ranges too uh, for those jobs as well. Yep. And sometimes the techs are actually the most fun to go out with. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> okay, so next question. I guess I'm... I recently wrote a blog piece about sometimes I, I get I get kind of anxious. I have some anxiety. I don't really like to – I don't put myself out there as much. And I know that mm -hmm. seems weird because here, it, it, you know, I, I have a, a different persona maybe. Sure. But, I mean, deep down, that's – I I get anxious about stuff like that. What if you're one of those people that, like me, tends to say no before you say yes? How do you, how do you break out of that? Well, uh – I would say before I started traveling, I, w I was always, a, I've always been a social person and, you know, got to know people want to go out, but learning how to be vulnerable by practicing and, you know, you might not want to do it, but try it to make sure you don't want to do it. You know, maybe sure. put a little pressure on yourself because again, I say this all the time, the things, the uh, scariest things in life tend to be the most rewarding. So just put mm -hmm. yourself out there a few times, give it a try at least. Mm -hmm. And you know, you do it with someone that you mess with, more than likely someone's going to respond in kind and kind of show you the ropes, show you uh, the city that you're in at the moment. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately for that, you just, you just got to do it. It's like when you took the leap to go on an assignment somewhere, where from, away from home. Right. That's scary too, but if you're loving it, there's reasons why, and typically it's because you're doing things you never thought you would do or even maybe like to do at first. Talk about your journey, journey a little bit, like how that started when when you first met your people, mm -hmm. right? And, and you've got a really tight-knit group mm -hmm. that not only do you work with here, but that you worked with previously. Sure. Talk about that journey a little bit. Um, so I kind of had two different groups in a sense. My first travel assignment I've met a bunch of great people I happened to get lucky and my cousin lived in that town as well so we had a group I met a couple of travel nurses uh, through the hospital and then she was actually on a different floor too uh, it's a wedding I just officiated whatever last year oh nice yeah and so that group we got together took my atlas adventure we all went to Vegas 
and I've stayed in touch, obviously, with them the whole mm -hmm. time. Um, never ended up traveling with any of them again on assignment, but it was, again, we found the people that like to go out and do stuff while we're in Santa Fe, and we, you know, when you're traveling, you tend to stay close to those people that you hang out on your assignments, and <laughs> even the staffers in Santa Fe. Sure. And then when I went on that trip to Cancun, I worked with Ashley Y on assignment at Mayo. We became friends through another mutual friend. And then after leaving that assignment, again, we stayed in contact. We're still friends. And she reached out, said, hey, a group of us that met at TrapCon are going to be going to Cancun all together. And you just seem like the type of person that would be interested in doing it. Yeah. So that's like one of those things. Like you talk to the right people. There's alphas out there that will bring you along on journeys like that. And then through that trip, the 27 or so travelers that were on it, mm -hmm. all of us are pretty tight-knit now. And we do stuff. We actually had a baby shower. Um, for Ashley, the one that invited me yeah. uh, in April, we all went out to uh, Houston. Oh my so. gosh! So even after all this time, right? Yep. You're still you're still in contact with them. So before all of that, were you a were you a yes guy? Were you were you a guy that would say yes to stuff like this, or were you more? I mean, you're an, you were an ER, you are an ER nurse, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so there, there's a certain bit of outgoing that comes sure. with that. Mm -hmm. But would you? Would you have done that before, or did you need that person to pull you along that first time? I mean, realistically, I probably would have, but I got better at it over time. You know, I changed career paths a bunch, and I realized once I got into nursing that to try more things, mm -hmm. you know. And again, with when I started traveling, that was scary. But after a month, I loved it, and I was like, okay, just keep doing crap like that. <laughs> you know, right. stuff you've never thought you'd be able to do and give it a try and do say yes. I have mm -hmm. definitely focused on, unless you have a real good reason not to do something, just say yes and see if you like it. And that doesn't necessarily mean like, you're going skydiving and you're going, you know, it could mm -hmm. be just like, hey, I, you know, I heard you talking. There's a church group you can go with, 100%. you know, or something like that, right? Yeah. Possibilities are endless there. Yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. just have to be open and receptive. 100%. To do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, Okay. Finally, days off. Like, is that the time you're doing it? Is it like after work? Like, what? Where did you find? I, I assumed you use the your days off to unwind, right? Sure. But is it after work, before work? I mean, if you were a night nurse, right? Yeah. So you're going out for mimosas in the morning or, or whatever it is, and you know that type of thing. What was the best time for you? Do you Definitely working. So I did mid shift and day shift just a couple of times, but mostly I was nights. And there is something after a long day, uh, long night in the ER that a lot of us would love to. We all know the spots to serve cocktails at seven in the morning. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So that was one of my favorites because you could just gone through hell together yeah. uh, with like the patient load. It was just crazy. And so there's nothing like that, like the jovial nature of us just all kind of getting to relax for the first time in 12 hours that was always my favorite honestly yeah. so i think in the end it, all of those things exist right the loneliness mm -hmm. exists the isolation 100%. exists it only exists though if you allow it to mm -hmm. and i think even if you're not that person that tends to say yes if you're like me who would mm, just kind of say no in the beginning just be you know or whatever mm -hmm. say yes that first time yeah and see what happens. A hundred percent. Yeah. Just don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Well, Brad, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. We'll do this again very soon. Sounds good to me. All right. See you next time.